Hi, everybody. So I'm Matt, you said. Um, so thanks for having me here. Um, I just wanted to come up here because I, I had a miracle, got a miracle from God. I wanted to share it with everybody. Um, I basically got delivered from 28 years of functional alcoholism. Um, four, four, four months ago, um, and, and uh, among other things, there, there were some porn issues as well. And um, that's all gone. I haven't even thought about it. So I want to tell you all my story. And uh, so, um, so I grew up um, with a great, great set of parents. Um, when I was six years old, I remember uh, my mom prayed with me to accept Jesus in my heart. So I started early, and I just remember the the feeling of warmth that came over me when I did that, and I'll always remember that. Um, and as I grew older, you know, I, the drinking was huge in our town, and I started, you know, in as early as seventh grade, just going to parties and kind of, uh, you know, doing that and you just started growing. It was just, you know, that's if you were cool, you drank in, in our town. And, um, you know, that just grew as I went through uh, high school. And um, then when I went to college, I joined a fraternity and it got even worse. Um, and uh, by the time I was graduated um, college and went uh, to the workforce, you know, I was basically drinking every every night you know and to the point where i was six to twelve drinks for for and i'm 48 or 47 now so do the math um so for a long time and i um for the most part i would say functional alcoholic because i was able to hold a successful job i hit it pretty much from everybody you know i was able to keep my family together but you know as i started to get older um you know there were some cr cracks in the armor so to speak, um, you know, a couple of years ago, I just, um, you know, I always kind of had that internal um, barometer of, you know, don't, don't go over this many drinks by this time of day or whatever. That is crazy. It was in total bondage, um, lying to myself. But I let that governor go a couple of times, right? And I ended up a couple of years ago, um, my wife uh, had enough and, you know, she just said, go to a hotel. And that really shocked me. And I remember I came um, to the Arizona Deliverance Center because I, I knew it was an addiction. I I couldn't stop. You know, I would try to exercise it away. You know, I would I would drink and then I would go run 10 miles to, to get normal again. And who does that? Like, why don't you just run 10 miles and get in better shape? That's just what you're supposed to do. But I was doing it as a way just to, to keep the habit going. And um, I came to see Brother Mike a couple years ago. Um, and I went through some deliverance. We, you know, felt that was a problem, and and I and I and I did it, and I felt better. But I, I held something back. I went about ninety percent in. In the back of my mind, I was always like, I'm just going to take a little break, and then I'm going to, you know, then I'll be able to socially drink again or whatever. Yet a year later, it grew to the point where I was in the same position but worse. Um, and and, and you know that happened. The cycle kept happening, and I wasn't able to break it. And I just I kept that door creak. Um, creaked open, and um, uh, this last time, four four months ago, was re was really serious. Um, you know, I was it was a Thursday night, and um, you know I had been you know drinking too much, and you know my my wife could tell, and she said, you know what, I've got the divorce papers signed. Um, I'm about to send them in, and um, you know I don't want you alone with the kids, and that shocked me to my core, and I went on a binge, and um, to the point where. You know, I was, um, I, I felt I had lost it all, and I, and I drank to the point I couldn't stop. And my family came home the next day, and I just remembered, you know, my kids saying, Daddy, just just stop drinking wine, and everything will be okay. And, and I said, I don't, I don't think I can. Um, and I said, I'll go to the hospital, take me to the hospital, and I'll, you know, I'll do what I have to do. I don't want to lose you guys. Um, what I failed to say is earlier that day, I had called Brother Mike, and I left a message, and I said, you know, I can't stop drinking. I'm, I'm losing my family. I don't know what to do. I, and I, I said that this might be it. Talk me out of it. And I, I don't know if you remember, I, I left that message. And anyway, I went to the hospital and um, then I went to rehab for a couple of days. And uh, when you're in rehab, you don't have your phone. I was worried about stuff getting done at work. Like I, you know, I had a, luckily I had a friend at work that I said, you know, I'm going through some stuff. Just take care of everything for me. Everything was fine from that perspective. But, you know, I talked to my wife a couple times when I was in rehab, and she was basically, where, you know, when when you get out, you have to find another place to live. And I'm like, great, I'm going to go from rehab to a hotel. This is awful. 
Um, I was at rock bottom. I mean, this it was horrible. I didn't know what to do. Um, and when I got out of rehab, I finally got my phone, and there was a message from Brother Mike saying, hey, we have an appointment scheduled. I had an Uber coming to pick me up, and, and uh, there was a message from Brother Mike and said, come to the House of Healing at 3 o'clock. I was like, oh, it's 2. I can get there. This must be God speaking. And I got in the Uber, and the Uber driver was a born-again Christian. I told him my story, and we talked, and we got to the Arizona Deliverance Center, and um, there was the doors were locked. I was like, oh, man. And then I realized he had sent me that message like it past midnight, so it was I was a day off from the appointment, so I was like, oh, man. Well, I looked over, and the Uber driver was, was talking to some guy out on the street. It was Ron. I'd never met Ron before. But anyway, the guy, he flagged this Ron, Ron down and, and asked if he knew what time the church opened. I have a friend who really needs to get in there. And he's like, well, I'm, I work there. I can talk to Matt. And so I spent about two hours with Ron. And um, I did things differently this time. Rather than holding something back, I, I gave myself 100% like to Jesus, like 100 like held nothing back. I mean, I, I repented like completely. I prayed. I went through about an hour deliverance. I don't know what was in that, whatever, the trash basket that I was, <laughs> but it was, it was stuff that didn't need to be in me, and, um, and I, and I, and I tried to quit drinking so many times, because my heart was, I didn't want to, I didn't, does anybody want to be an addict up to something? No. Oh. You, you, have, you have childhood dream to become an alcoholic, you know? No, I don't think that's how it works. Um. But when I got done with Brother Ron, um, and I still had these issues at home, but I felt peace, no more craving, gone. Like I, and I knew, I knew, like I always in the past, I always had a thing in the back of my mind. I'm going to, maybe I can take a week off and then, and then drink. Like I was like, nope, I'm done. It's over. I, I'm God's now. Devil can't touch me. And, uh, you know, the fan, you know, I was welcomed back into the house. I'm still there. I haven't gotten the divorce papers yet. My my um, my relationship with my kids is amazing. Uh, you know they love me. They know what I'm doing tonight. They're eight and thirteen. They know I'm coming here to talk about this. Um, you know I had some other addictions too that that I overcame. I, I'm just not comfortable talking because I might want to share this with them. But um, God healed me of everything. You know I've come back a couple times just to make sure I got everything out of me. I was here on Thursday talking to uh, to Rick um, and uh, we had a great talk and. Um, yeah, things, I mean, literally, I, it's been four months and I, I don't even, cra no cravings for alcohol, no, or, or any of those others, and, um, I feel stronger, um, and I'm so appreciative, God is amazing, I just wanted to, I, I think it's important for people to know that, don't give up, because I tried this a couple times and it didn't work, and, and I know, and the reason is because I wasn't a hundred percent into it, that's the difference, you have to completely it's got to be from the gut. And so um, hopefully that's, somebody can hear that and know that because I struggled with, with this for 28 years. Go, so, ahead and, yeah. go, go ahead and pray for any, go oh. ahead and pray for any addict with. Yeah, any, so um, let's just, uh, if you guys want to pray, pray with me, Lord, um, just pray for anybody that needs it. So Lord, in Jesus' name, I, I just, I'm so grateful for what you've done in my life and, and for just rescuing me from the pit. I was, the devil almost got me, and you saved me, and, and I'm yours, and I thank you for that, Lord. And I just pray that for any other person that's struggling with alcohol or any other addictions out there, that, that they can hear this message and be encouraged by it and, and know that if they really, really want it and they put everything into it and, and surrender 100% to God, they can get delivered. So, amen. Amen. So. Yeah. Praise God. Give it up for the Lord Jesus. And it has nothing to do with any of us. It has to do with somebody who's committed, right? And their relationship with God. Amen. All right, Brother Mike. How'd your, uh, how, how'd your service go last night? It went well. Tell, Tell me about what? Tell, <laughs> Tell them how your service went. The altar call. Altar call? Yeah. Tonight. Well, altar call went well. <laughs> we had a salvation of a teenager last night. Praise God for that. 
the, the, the daughter, the daughter that you brought. Yeah, she, she got saved. She got saved. Got yeah. some demons out of her. Oh, okay, great. Yeah, it was good. Good All stuff. Right. So, okay. Put me on the spot. Right, good evening. <laughs> she gets a little blabby, so I got to <laughs> shut her down. <laughs> All right, the seminar on divine healing is coming up. Why do some people get healed and some don't? We'll answer that question for you. There's a website. And uh, remember, I'm on the radio every day on 10, 10 a.m., Monday through Monday. And I'm also on the radio 24 hours a day on the omnifm.com on the Internet. You can catch that on the website. I'm also on this uh, uh, secular station on Sunday nights at 9 p.m. Dark Sky Radio. That's not a Christian uh, station. And uh, if you'd like to help out our ministry financially, if you buy anything off Amazon, go to Smile Amazon and put in our charity name and they'll donate money to us if you buy something. Good Search will do the same thing. It won't cost you anything. If you use them instead of Google. And... Uh, Tonight's teaching is on uh, YouTube channel number two, House of Healing AZ. There's our miracle list if you want to do deliverance at home. You know, somebody who's mentally ill who's a Christian or a troubled Christian, just send me an email and I'll send those to you right away. Okay? YouTubers, you know what your job is to open up a terror cell in your church. Start terrorizing the devil by picking off the sick people. You pray for people to get healed and delivered. You got to do them one at a time. Works real easy. As soon as a couple people get healed, the word of mouth will spread all over. You'll be so busy you won't believe it. People will just be running to you. All right, thank you for your donations. Those are the boxes on the doors there. Appreciate your help in the ministry. God bless you. You can donate on the website, on the PayPal. And remember our... Uh, uh, if you have somebody who's mentally ill, uh, I wrote a study guide on the root cause and cure of mental illness, plan of spirits. The other one is on divine healing. I'll be highlighting that at the seminar on the 30th. I also wrote a book, Exposing Satan. Those are in the bookstore. I'll see you tomorrow in Flagstaff. Anybody know anybody in Flagstaff? You do? Oh, we'll be there at 1 o'clock if you give them a call. That's where I grew up. It's a free seminar. You grew up in Flagstaff? All right, we'll pray for you. But 1 o'clock tomorrow, <laughs> I'll be in Flagstaff at the Oasis of Hope. You ever heard of that place? No? Okay. We'll be there at 1 o'clock. The ministry team's coming with me. I'll see you on Skid Row on uh, December 22nd next month for a, a healing service down there. That's a very interesting experience. Just coming to watch that will blow your mind. All right. If you've got to do anything in life, you've got to have an ID. Except vote. But I mean, everything else, if you go to the bank, uh, doesn't matter what it is, you've got to have an ID. I had to have one today. I went down to the DMV. You ever been down there? Yeah. That'll put fear of God in you. DMV. Wow, that's frightening. But I went to the one at Sun City. So there's nobody, nobody was there. But I had to show my ID. I had to get another disabled handicap sticker for my daughter, for my truck. And they, and they expire. So I went down there and they said, well, we need to see your driver's license. So they looked me up on the computer. They saw my daughter. They saw me. They gave me a new thing to hang in your, you know, your rear view mirror. You got to have an ID. Right? Well, in the spirit world, that's 10 times more important. Your spiritual ID is seen by everybody in the spirit world and virtually nobody in the natural world. Who are you? Ever wonder? Let's find out. Hey, what is the reconciliation problem? Well, that was an old problem, wasn't it? If you go to Genesis 3, <laughs> I didn't even write these scriptures down because they're, they're too depressing. <laughs> but it's Adam screwing up. That's a sad story, and it's sickening because he murdered the entire human race. Wow. We didn't even know it, but...
but Adam was our representative in life he represented humanity and I would vote for him as history's biggest screw-up he was told hey everything's yours you're on cake duty forever the guy was a perfect physical specimen I can relate uh, his wife was monstrously bootalicious I mean perfect perfecto he lived in the Garden of Eden didn't have to work no Social Security benefits no aid to dependent children nothing he didn't have any children that's why he was saying <laughs> Adam and Eve roaming around eating fruit making love party on dude but Yahweh Jehovah the great Hebrew God told him don't eat off that tree and like any kid as soon as you tell him not to do something that's what he went and did and when he did it he damned the entire human race Can you imagine that that is an incredible story a sad story everybody dies because of our good buddy Adam the screw up there he is he's a super goof <laughs> numero uno he brought a curse on him why because he listened to his wife <laughs> Jehovah said to him and uh, I can relate to, to this I've had several marriages myself and he said because you chose to listen to your wife and not me Jehovah said here's your curses and there they are the ground the planet earth was cursed because of him can you imagine that the whole stinking planet the whole thing was in mint condition and the guy ruined it and then thorns and thistles growing look at that then he had to go work for a living can you imagine that working for a living sweating and working then what did he have to do die he was going to die when he was created he was an eternal being he would have never died he'd still be around today in mint condition GQ similar and her <laughs> Eve made Pamela Anderson in her prime look like a dog I mean this gal was a drop-dead knockout they all died and they went as far as we know they went to hell they ruined everything he ruined everything he screwed up big time and he did something really horrible he passed sin onto us and so that when you're conceived in your mother's womb something really bad happens in there mm. <laughs> Something really bad that should have never happened there had it not been for Goofy. You conceived in iniquity. By one man, sin entered the world, and death, humans dying, were caused by his sin. Death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Romans chapter 5. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. And even those over those who had not sinned. Now, how did that happen? Let's take a closer look at it. Adam did that, and he brought sin on the human race, but I didn't eat out of that tree. How the heck did I end up in sin? What happened? Okay? Adam turned out to be my father. <laughs> Adam is my distant father or that sucks Meaning that all of us have a rotten family tree If he's in my family tree my tree sucks Now I got a problem Thousands of years later how many thousands of years? I don't know I know it was thousands 
I was born in sin. God, how in the heck did that happen? How could that be? Romans 5. Until the law, sin was in the world. But sin was not imputed. Elegeo. Put on my account. You ever make a grocery list? I don't. I trust my memory and then I come home with half the stuff I forgot. And then I hear a voice in my home. It's my wife. I hear the voice. Did you get the... I feel the cringe right there. <laughs> Nobody here married? Well, what you get, you get that wife cringe? But had I wrote it out and made the list, like I should have, when you sin, your sin goes on your account. Who the heck keeps track of that? The Holy Ghost. Why does he do that? Because he's just. If you do something good, it goes on your account. If you do something bad, it goes on your account. Justice requires it. In our society, that's not true. Why? We have what they call lawyers. And they're professional criminals, so they try to get stuff off your account, even though you legitimately did it. Well, God doesn't do that. He just looks at the absolute truth. If you did it, it was bad. Goes on your account. If you did it and it was good, goes on your account. And he never misses anything. Unlike the voting in Florida. Got these votes here, and where are they? Well, they kind of disappeared. Your sin never disappears. God kept that one sin, if one sin, if that's all you did was one sin, then dropped over death. That one sin was put on your account. Imputation. Okay. However, check it out. Imputation does not occur until your conscience matures and you, like Adam, know the difference between right and wrong. Look, Adam has become as one of us. He knows the difference between right and wrong, Jehovah said. Ooh. A child does not know the difference between right and wrong. Babies do not know the difference. Infants in the womb, they do not have imputational sin. Hello? If a baby dies or a baby's aborted, four-year-old gets hit by a car, whatever it is, they do not go to hell and they do not face judgment. Why? Because no sin was Allegheo put on their account, made in click. Okay. However, when your conscience matures and you become like Adam and you know the difference between right and wrong, click at that very moment, and it's different for each person. Each person's conscience matures at a different rate. But when it matures and you know the right and you know the wrong, morally, the clock starts ticking on your life. And you are going to die. Thanks, Adam. Screwed everybody over. What is a sin gene? Well, believe it or not, we got it from Adam. Where is that sin gene at? Thank you. It's in the sperm. Where does your sin come from? Your dad, not your mom. The mother is pregnant with the child, but it's the sperm that transferred the death gene to the child. It does not come from the mother. It came from Adam, not Eve. Adam willfully sinned. Eve was deceived, Paul said. Galatians. Anybody not following me? Everybody following me? I'm going to kill it today, tonight, and tomorrow. 
the sin gene comes down from Adam Correct It comes down thousands of years through the males here the the father of this woman passed the sin gene onto her she dies he the dad passes the sin gene onto the son and the daughter not the mother the wages of sin is death once that sin gene is passed into the fetus they received a death sentence the child is going to die sooner or later doesn't matter Adam gave you a death sentence not Eve behold all the souls are mine says the Lord Ezekiel 18 the fathers the sons they're all mine and the soul that sins it shall Adam thanks Adam Genesis 2 of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it because the day you eat it you will die dude he was told in advance you can eat all of this it's all yours that you don't do welcome to American Christianity you know people come here they get these fantastic deliverances so grateful for them and then their conscience is speaking to them there's certain things I can do there's certain things I can't do if I want to keep these demons out of my brain and out of my body hmm things that make you go hmm <laughs> now there's certain things I can do that are going to pick up spirits there's certain things I can do that are going to build me up spiritually so I can smash Satan and all his evil works it's based on my choices I can either eat of these trees or I can go over and eat that one that I was told not to eat of the reason people don't get delivered, the reason they don't find their destiny, the reason their lives fizzle out into nothingness is because they were supposed to eat out of these trees and they wanted to eat out of that one. The gospel is not rocket science. I like to keep it simple. Listen, each of you were born in sin but sin was not imputed to you until your conscience matured and you knew the difference between right and wrong second graders don't know the moral difference between right and wrong The children came to Jesus and said, the angels of father always they're always beholding his face these kids always let the kids come to me why that the kids had no imputed sin that's only for adults there's a kid there talking he has no imputed sin you hear that <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we got a major problem here. I mean this thing is a gargantuan eternal suck You got humans on this side you got God on their side and there's nothing that can be done For them to get together why this perfect holy God. is not going to have anything to do With sinful sin and sinless people born in sin people sinning willfully Hey, there's a break. There's no way to fix it. They broke up and they can't get back together. There's a great gulf between us, like Lazarus and the rich man. There was a big gulf there, some kind of giant chasm. That's what it says in the Greek. There was a chasm. And he couldn't get over there to get a cool drink. 
and the people that wanted to leave paradise and come over and help their relatives that were burning up they couldn't get over there to help them that's what Abraham said he said you can't come here we can't go there the people over there wanted to go over there somehow and pull their burning relatives out of hell so since they couldn't go pull them out of hell the guy says to Abraham can you send Lazarus back and tell my brothers I got a bunch of brothers living in sin they eat out of that tree they didn't want to eat out of that tree these trees he went that one he said they're gonna end up burning in hell down here with me could you send him back there and Abraham said no we can't send him back remember that story what is that Luke uh, 16 isn't it? yeah okay Genesis 3 I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed it shall shoof is the Hebrew word I don't know anything about Hebrew but I enjoy pronouncing the words shoof is a fun word shoof see it makes me seem like I'm a Bible scholar shoof it means to you know snap Okay, the devil's gonna get his head snapped off here pretty soon. Yeah. In fact, you're gonna get a pre you're gonna get a uh, preview of it tonight. Here, a bunch of snapping's gonna go on. And Jesus had his heel snapped at Calvary. However, an incredible miracle cure Jehovah invented. It was fantastic. I don't exactly know how he did it, but I think I know. I'll give you my version of it. It may not be right. I think what he did was he looked around heaven and he said, Hey, I got a bad problem here. I can't have anything to do with these humans. They're sinners. But I love them too much to let them go. He's sitting there thinking about Satan and all the angels that stabbed him in the back. He thought about it for a little while and said, no, nah, 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 I'm not going to go get him. I'm going to let him go permanently. These human beings, now that's a different story. I can't get these humans out of my heart. I got to crawl in here. I need to get these humans back. Let me think about what I'm going to do. He calls, I think he called Michael in, you know. He seems to be the big angel. Michael, buddy, come in here. I want to talk to you for a minute. Yes, Lord Jehovah. Listen, I came up with an idea. I want you to go to earth and become a human being. Then I want you to let the Romans and the Jews butcher you. And then I want you to die on the cross, stark naked, with not a penny to your name with nothing left and then I want you to die an ugly filthy death on the cross yeah I think Michael reacted to that <laughs> I think he had diarrhea I think I think he one of those things where you're whoop. Jehovah looked around heaven and there was nobody to do it so he said I'll have to do it myself thank you I'll do it myself nobody else is worthy to do it I will Wow, but how am I going to do it? Because I'd got to beat this sin gene thing, and I got to beat this sin thing. Those are big challenges, huge challenges. Then I got to pay for those sins because I can't just let something go. See, justice won't let something go. You can't do it if it's justice. If it's American justice, as you know. You pay them over here and then you let it go there. 
Divine justice requires payment for every sin. Nothing gets by. Nothing. There's no, ah, forget about it. It's all good. It never happens. That's a human thing, not a divine thing. So Jehovah, Jehovah's got some big problems here to overcome. So what does he do? Huh. He fixes it. How does he do it? Wow. He fixes it huge. Matthew chapter 1. Now the birth of Jesus Christ went like this. His mother was espoused to Joseph. And before they came together, she was pregnant by the Holy Ghost. Now, this is a problem situation, potentially. In Ju Judaism, if you fooled around, uh, you got, uh, you reaped the benefits for that. Uh, somebody picked up a stone and bashed your face in till you were dead. So, here in America, adultery is like, you know, they're high-fiving it. How many... You doing them all great. You know, everybody loves adultery. Back then, <laughs> no, no. That's a no, no. In America, it's just like a it's like another thing, nothing to it. Back then, wow, that was serious business. She was going to be stoned to death when they found out about it. Okay? Mary was espoused to Joseph. What does that mean? It's kind of similar to being engaged, but it's not. What happens is with Jews is that if, if I want to marry you, I go to your parents and I say, hey, I want to marry her. And the parents go, well, let's negotiate a deal. What are you going to give me? What's the dowry? How much is that going to cost, cost the person, right? So, you know, you go to, depending on the woman you picked, Back then, some of the babes weren't very hot. Some of them were smoking, right? Just like today. Got your hot babes. And you got your, whoops, you know, sit in the back type babes. And uh, Mary, I don't know what she was. But anyway, the dowry varied based on the person, the family, their background, how wealthy they were. There were all kinds of different factors, but anyway... He says, I want to marry you, and I'll give you this and that. Here, you get two goats, three sheep, whatever it was. And if the dad agrees with it, then he says, okay, she's your wife. But you cannot have intercourse with her until this, these sheep are paid, these goats are paid, this, this is fixed, this is done, whatever the contract was. They came up with a contract. And so they negotiated the sex part in the contract. Is this making any sense? Here in America, it's just nobody cares. You just drop your drawers, you run out in the car. There, it was a serious thing. And if you violated those mores, you could, it could cost you your life. Yeah, nobody thinks anything about it here. So in this case, what had happened was we know that they were that they were married, but he had not slept with her yet. So whatever the contract term was, they hadn't reached that point yet. So now he's now he's in trouble because his wife's pregnant and he actually cares about her. He probably even loved her. I don't know. We don't know what kind of relationship they had, but we do know he cared about her because he didn't want her stoned. And so he says, uh, being a just man, Joseph, a good man and a godly man, he didn't want anybody to find out about it in public and embarrass her to tears and get her stoned. So he wanted to just get rid of her quietly, move her out of town, move her to the relatives in uh, God only knows where. He was going to hush, hush it. And while he's going through this uh, thought process, all of a sudden he has a dream, 
right? And spirit beings can enter your dreams. Correct? Uh, very common for people to have a God dream, a demonic dream, a nightmare, a repetitive bad dream, different things like that. Spirit beings can influence your subconscious and enter your dreams. The Holy Ghost can certainly do it. And uh, uh, Gabriel pops up in his dream. He says, hey, listen, Jehovah's going to pull the biggest miracle he's ever pulled. He's going to save these human beings. He can't live without them. You don't understand, do you? He can't stand living without you. It makes him sick to his stomach. He, he wants you around. He likes you. You say, well, I don't understand that nobody else likes me. Yeah, that's because your personality, to be honest with you, is kind of a little bit, ooh, oh. well, you know how you are. Father doesn't see your personality like people see you. He is dying to have you. And he couldn't stand. The angels, no, he flushed them. The devil stabbed him in the back. He never came back for the devil. He never gave them a salvation plan. Nothing. He never gave them angels a ch second chance. They screwed up once. They get the lake of fire. He never came back for them. You, he came back for. You, he has to have. He can't live without you. He can't make it without you. I got to have these humans. But I got this sin thing that's killing me. How am I going to fix this sin thing? Well, Miriam shows up pregnant. Joseph, go ahead and take her as your wife. Finish it up. What's conceived in her is ek, out of the Holy Ghost. And here's what you name him. Name him Jesus. What will he do? Ah, this miracle plan of God, humans, he's, he's going to fix this sin thing. He's not going to fix the sin thing for the angels. They sinned and they were permanently lost throughout all eternity. There's no redemption for angels. But humans, you, he couldn't let you go. He couldn't take it. He couldn't stand it. Losing you was too much for him. It just crushed him. Adam screwed you over huge. The father said, I've got to come back and get him. i got to get her. I can't live without her. You don't understand how much you're loved. Well, here this baby is going to save his people from their sins. How do you do it? Well, the miracle, number one, was what? The sin gene is gone. Joseph had the sin gene, but... He was his stepdad. Genius. Divine genius. How am I going to get rid of this sin gene that travels down through every father in all of humanity? Everybody's born in sin. Ah, except the one person. <laughs> He had no earthly father, and the sin gene did not transfer to the Son of God. Amen. Joseph said over here, the Holy Ghost there. First miracle. Got it. Why is he doing this? He can't stand to lose you. He can't take it. He can't live with it. live with losing you can't take it. something had to be done drastic and since nobody else was qualified to do it father had to do it himself this is a good sermon tonight well now you know the rest of the story after Jesus was born Mary and Joseph had a normal life Jesus had four what 
half brothers. Good. And he had how many? We don't know. A whole bunch of sisters. I just took a guess and thought it was that, but it doesn't matter. Who cares? The point is, they were only his half brothers and sisters because of Mary and Joseph was their father, but his stepfather. So we know that all of his brothers were born in sin. We know that Mary was born in sin. The Catholic thing's a lie because her dad had the sin gene. There's no such thing as Mary the Immaculate and all that. No. Uh -uh. All have sinned, including Mary, and fallen short of the glory of God. We have all, like sheep, gone astray. Each one turning to his own way. God laid on him the iniquity of us all, including Mary. Why did he do that? He couldn't live without you. He couldn't do it. Couldn't make it. The angels? Nah. Nah. I can live without them. The greatest creation in history? Lucifer? I can do without him. I gave him everything. Ten times more than I gave Adam. Now I'm going to give him something else. A boot into the lake of fire. But the, you? No. <laughs> he had to come back and get you. Now all this was done that it might be spoken of by the prophet. Behold a Parthenos. What is that? That is a person that has never had intercourse. Sexual virgin. Shall bring a child and now shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Wow. Jesus, the God who saves. Right? His name in Greek is Jesus. His name in Hebrew is Yehoshua or Yahshua. Jesus in English. Emmanuel. It means what? Yehoshua. The God who saves. Emmanuel, the God who's with you. Why? He couldn't make it without you. He had to come back for you. Yeah. That same principle is part of the code of the Marines. It's my understanding. I was never a Marine. But if somebody gets shot, they have a code. Nobody left behind. Sometimes you can't get them for obvious reasons. And sometimes father can't get them for obvious reasons. But he could not stand to leave you behind. He couldn't live with himself. He couldn't take it. Love can't take certain things. Losing you was too much for him. You have no idea how loved you are, how much he thinks about you. You don't even get it. Emmanuel, the God who's with us. Check it out, Romans 5. This is mercy from God. When we were without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Scarcely will a righteous man. Somebody will die for a righteous man. A good man they might die for. But God, check it out, commended his love for us. What love? Love that couldn't let him leave you behind. He couldn't do it. You don't understand. He's sick to his stomach when he can't bless you. <clears throat> Dad, you don't get it. He's hurt when you and he can't be friends. He couldn't leave you behind. He couldn't do it. Love wouldn't let him leave you behind. The angels? Ah, they're another story. Angels are a dime a dozen. You Shh. You are priceless to him. You're not some expendable angel somewhere. Angels are... <laughs> You're a saint and a child of God, not an angel down here. 
I'll get an email on that. That's okay. Check this out. Love. Love caused him to die for you while you were his sinner, while you were his enemy, while you didn't love him, while you hated him. That's how bad he wanted you. He couldn't leave you behind. What's the difference? Oh, a lot. Adam was the ruler of the old creation. Guess what? Jesus is the ruler of the new creation. If any man be in Christ, he is a new catesis, a creation. What's created in the person? That don't seem right. No, it doesn't, but it is right. Inside there is your spirit, man, and that was created brand new when the Holy Ghost came in there. You say, well, my body's still sinning, my mind is. Well, that might be true, but your spirit, man, perfect and holy, resurrected, healed, a new creation in Christ. Old things are passed away, spirit man. All things become new, perfection. Adam sinned and failed. Jesus was sinless and victorious. Adam failed. You can eat all these trees. Don't eat that one. He runs over and eats that one. Idiot. Don't. <laughs> The guy turned into Elmer. <laughs> Jesus never sinned. He wasn't born in sin. And he lived a sinless life. Oh, the second hurdle overcome. The hurdle for what? To get you back. Somehow, some way. Adam made sinners because he disobeyed. Jesus made saints because he did obey. Yeah, Adam made many sinners. I know this sounds nuts, but, and I know you don't look like it, but did you know you're a saint? Yeah, weird, isn't it? Strange, isn't it? The Catholic thing is all perverted. That, there's no such thing as dead saints. You're a living saint. Of God saint agnos in Greek means the sanctified one set apart one you set apart you've been set apart by God as part of his family why he couldn't leave his family behind Adam brought death to us Christ brings life to us What's what's father doing here? I can see it clearly. He's replacing Adam. Yeah, he found a second Adam a better one Didn't he? Adam gave us a sinful nature. I was born in sin and I sin by nature. I sin naturally It's easy to sin You don't need any training Really you don't need any help uh, if you just observe somebody sinning you pick it up instantly. It's a natural thing and then you do the same thing then you make it worse You ever notice that you were jacked up bad, but your kids are jacked up worse It gets worse at every generation. Why you're just learning sin is easy to learn It's easy to sin. There's not, not much to it It's a slam dunk. Oh Wait a minute. You need a new divine nature first Peter you have great and precious promises, and you are now partakers of the divine nature. Does that mean I'm God or I'm divine? No. Your Holy Spirit moved into your spirit, man, and now you have divinity within you. See, when you wake up in the morning, you go, I, my life sucks and I suck. You're not getting it. You're not understanding who you are. You see, your ID is bad. It's expired. You need a new ID. You have divinity in there. Okay, I know what you're thinking. You don't look divine. No, you don't. Some of you look a little scruffy, but 
God looks on the inside man looks on the outer part God looks on the on the heart he looks in the spirit man and sees perfecto Arabic <laughs> you got exceeding great and precious Adam brought what judgment on us Wow the soul that sent it it shall die thanks Adam check it out as by the offense Romans 5 of one paraptima is the Greek word that's usually translated trespass okay but it means to screw up or blow it okay so it says as by as by as by the failure of one judgment came upon all men two condemnation now this is an interesting word katakrama means to be tried and sentenced it's the whole trial you go through the trial they bring the witnesses in the jury considers your evidence the judge reads the verdict clunk the gavel goes down and they haul you off to Florence that's katakrama in spirit world you are born in sin as soon as you sin you are now damned to hell because the soul that sins dies if you die or you're fortunate enough to die as an infant boop, you don't go to hell or face judgment because of what the law of imputation sin is not imputed where there is no law so if you are a second grader there's no moral law there they don't grasp it they don't understand it so they don't have their sin imputed to them but you did have your sin imputed to you and Adam brought us all to judgment and then damnation in hell judgment guilty hell thank you Adam good job buddy idiot <laughs> but Father said, I can't leave these people behind. It'll kill me to do it. By the righteousness of one. Oh my goodness. Justification. The Caiaphas, you've been acquitted. Every president here in America does the exact same thing, usually on their last day in office. They sit down and they make a list of all the Thieves, crooks, and robbers who have helped them over the years. <laughs> and then they pardon them. And they walk out the door. You ever seen that? No. Yeah. Well, this is better. You have been acquitted by God. You are not guilty anymore. Amen. One Adam brought you damnation and hell. The other one brought you justification acquittal salvation wow why the Savior wasn't born in sin he never committed a sin therefore he was God's perfect sacrifice for your sin the ABC's of Christianity tonight at the deliverance center <laughs> Adam displeased father Jesus pleased him. Wow, Adam let him down and broke his heart. Jesus mended his heart. It says here in 2 Peter, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Jesus always did those things that pleased him. Why was Jehovah so happy? You ever wonder that? Well, he didn't do this and that, and that. No, that wasn't the real reason. It's that Jehovah could give him everything. No, you're not following me. Father wasn't so happy with his son because he didn't sin. He didn't commit adultery. He didn't cuss. He didn't do this. Quit. I didn't, didn't, didn't. No, no, no. Quick, quick, quick. No, that wasn't it. Father likes giving to people. It makes him feel good. He feels it. Yeah, he likes to bring it. 
Sin broke the thing. Adam screwed him over. The thing cut. And that killed him. And he had to figure out a way, a supernatural divine way to get you back and overcome that sin thing. Why did Jesus please him so much? Father gave him everything. Nothing blocked it. See, the law of sowing and reaping was on Jesus the same way it's on you. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. You sow into sin. You reap demons and death and pain and sorrow and destruction. You sow into the Holy Ghost. You reap the benefits of God. That makes him happy because Father is a genetic giver. He likes to give things to people. And Christians get really pissed off at him. They get mad and hornets at him when they don't have this and that and this prayer wasn't answered. That. What they should be doing and what we try to help you look at is what's blocking the benefits. It's not Father's end that blocks it. It's blocked down on our end. As soon as you remove that block, the blessings flow. With Jesus, there was no blocks. Amen. Father just Amen. gave him everything. Amen. And was happy to do it. Amen. Made him happy. I always do those things that please him. He's happy. See, why? He's able to give. Your view of Father is wrong. You're not getting it. You're not seeing it. He's a different kind of person than you think he is. He doesn't think like us. Look, Adam lost everything. He lost the planet Earth. Have you seen the planet Earth lately? Google Earth it. I mean, this thing is blowing up. Nature is going crazy. Uh, everything's bad. Thanks, Adam. People are dying in droves. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions. They're all dying. Most of them go right straight to hell. This is killing the Lord. Why? He did everything he could to get them back. Guess what? Jesus got it all. Everything Father has, he said, is mine. Why? That made Father happy. He's a genetic, unstoppable, chronic giver. He can't help himself. You don't understand his personality. You're not getting it. He likes you. Nobody else does, but Father looks at you and goes, wow, I like you. I love you. I got all these things I want to give you. I can't do it. I heard you yesterday complaining. I can't do it. You're back on porn. I can't, you, you're griping at somebody. You're, yelling, you're blocking your miracles. Father is dying to give you. And so, yes, he's sad. The Bible says, do not grieve the Holy Ghost. The Greek word lupeo means to make him sad. What makes him sad? You sinning and blocking Father's blessings. You think you sinned and that hurt God? No, he's not standing around here with a club looking to smash you. He can't give you something and that hurts him. You don't understand it. He doesn't see it the way you see it. He doesn't think like you think. He's not, he's not hurt because of why you think he's hurt. Oh, I did this and that hurt him. No, you did that and then that blocked the blessings he wanted to give you. Because a thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And when you help the thief, he just comes on in and takes your stuff. The same on. <clears throat> Adam caused sin to abound. Jesus caused... <laughs> Grace to abound. No. 
Now it's, more, it's better than that. Let's read it. The law entered and the offense, paraptima, the transgression, the failure, abounded. Duh, no kidding. The whole human race before Noah went into total sin. But where sin abounds, grace does hooper parasil. What does that mean? Super abound. Oh, you don't understand. See, mercy super abounds. Sin only abounds. Darn it. Sin is down here. Mercy is up here. When you got down in yourself and you started criticizing yourself, I'm running yourself down. That was sin here. Mercy for that was up here. Where your sin abounds. Criticizing yourself, running others down, hating others, sinning against your parents, acting a fool. That's sinning. That abounds. Mercy super abounds for that sin. On Judgment Day, you have no excuse. Why? Because your sin abounded. But grace super abounded. How'd that happen? Well, Jesus wasn't born in sin and lived a sinless life and was the perfect sacrifice for your sin. And you now have no excuse. God's blessing train has left the station. And he's looking for a delivery post. You. Well, you say, oh, I sinned, I did this and that. Well, if you did, you just repent, and then it opens right up again. Why? Because where sin abounds, grace is at... Where abounds? Oh, I backslid, I did this and that. Yeah, I know you did, that was sin. But you don't understand, you're not getting it. That was sin abounding. More about super about. I can't come back to God. I've done too many bad things. Well, that's a lot of sin, and that's abounding all over the place. But you're you're spiritually ignorant. Sin abounds, but grace super abounds. Every drunk can be healed. Why? Drinking and drunken is sin, and that's abounding. Yeah, you're bombed. But grace, super abound. You don't believe me? That's that guy in the sweater there. How about you? What's your ID? I'll tell you what it is, since you don't know. God made Jesus to be sin for us, so that we could be the righteousness of the angel Moroni, the Mormon church. No. No, inside there is your spirit, man. Inside there is the Holy Ghost. That is the righteousness of God in Christ, right in there. Well, you don't understand, I was drunk this week and I was on porn this week. No, you don't understand. See, this teaching is helping you because you don't understand. That was sinning, but grace is here. That's what you did last week. Why well, don't feel righteous? Hey, it's not about feelings. It's about the Word of God and truth. He said, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. It doesn't matter whether you feel like it or not. What if you get the flu? You don't feel saved, do you? Does that mean you're not saved? You got the flu and you're vomiting and you're pooping? That's stupid. <laughs> what are you, nuts? You're sick and you're... That's got nothing to do with your spirit, man. That's your body going through a bunch of crap. There's nothing wrong with you. You are the righteousness of God in Christ, period. What's wrong with you? Dude, listen, I'm going to tell you something. You don't have any sin anymore. Why? Because you're a good person and you did what? No. No. No, that's not it. 
We had to find somebody who wasn't born in sin. I need to find somebody who lived a sinless life to take my place on the cross of Calvary and take my place in the lake of fire. Now, who can I find to do that? See, Gabriel busy? Uh, no. God had to do it himself. Why didn't he do it from heaven? Why didn't he just sit there and blow out a bunch of commandments? He's good at that. No, that isn't how it works. He had to become you to pay for your sin. You can't just decree it. I forgive you. Not, no. No. No, that's American justice. Somebody gets off. Okay, that's a bunch of crap. That's not going to work. Somebody's got to pay for what you did. You either pay for it or the Son of God pays for it. There's not a third person involved. It's you or him. Somebody's going to pay. And Jesus became what? Ephesians 5. An offering for our sin. Washed in the blood. There it is. Your sins no longer exist. Therefore, your guilt and shame no longer exist because you didn't do anything. Now that one disappeared. Listen to this. My father loves me. That's the Greek verb agapao. It means to get love to someone. See? So, agape, I love you. That ain't going to help her. Agapao is, I love you. See, I'm getting it to her. Father wants to get the blessings to you to make him happy. So you're looking at this thing, as Grandpa used to say, bass backwards. <laughs> you don't have blessings from God, okay? I get it. Why is that? Well, God's mad at me because I did this and that. No, your blessings are being blocked. And he's not mad at you. He's hurt because he can't give them to you. You don't understand his mindset. He doesn't think like we do. Father gets his love to me. See? Why? I obey. I'm loving him. I am laying down my life. Jesus didn't have to die for us. He chose to. He had free will. You have free will. You don't have to serve God. You can tell him to suck it. You have free will. You can do any darn thing you want. Period. Jesus was the same way. He could have sinned. He could have said, hey, this is getting ridiculous. This is nuts. These human beings aren't worth it. They're too much trouble. Did you see the scribes and Pharisees ragging on him? They were always attacking him. Listen, somebody's always going to attack you in life. Jesus never committed one sin. I'll tell you what, he caught hell all the time. Well, if he was sinless in catching it, what chance do you have not to catch it? You're going to catch all kinds of crap in this life. What are you supposed to do with it? Let it go. Let it go. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You are a born-again saint. You are a new creation in Christ. You are a child and son and daughter of God Almighty. God couldn't leave you behind. What was Jesus doing? He was modeling for us. Hey, if I'm taking a beating, you're going to take one too. If they don't like me, they're going to like you. I lay down my life. Nobody's taking anything from me. I have exousia authority to lay it down. I have exousia authority to take it again. I received this commandment from my Father. Jesus died so you could live. There it is. Hebrews chapter 2. John chapter 11. What was the resurrection of Lazarus all about? Well, it was a big miracle and he was dead for four days. That wasn't even the point of the story. 
It was so much deeper than that. What was he doing there? The Holy Ghost was using an illustration of some guy who'd been dead for four days to show you why Christ came for your life, to loose you and let you go. It wasn't about raising a guy from the dead. I mean, that was a big deal, but this is a much bigger deal. You are not to live in the bondage of Satan and demons anymore. You don't have to live like that anymore. You don't have to live enslaved alcohol or sex or drugs or food. Listen, all that stuff went to Calvary. You don't have to live like this anymore. Father came back for you. He couldn't let you go. Jesus tasted death for every man. Did you know that Jesus was sick so you could be well? There it is right there. Matthew 8. Jesus became sick. How do you know that? Check this out. It says here, Esaias, what is that? What's that? This one. That's the Septuagint version of Isaiah. Now look at this. Lambano. What does that mean? That's something you receive. If I handed her my pointer, that would be Lombano. Like she received it if she took it. She hasn't taken it. Notice that? She's not too sure about me, but that's fine. If you receive something, it's yours. Your sicknesses. He voluntarily received Lambano. Don't you see that? Can't you see that verse? He was sick. So we could be well. Look. He was poor. So we could be rich. Where's that at? Right here. You know, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, he was rich for your sake. He became poor. What do you mean? Well, through his poverty, you might be rich. Wigglesworth preached on this all the time. He was always talking about his poverty. God, who came from the glories of heaven, came down here to become a human being. The Jews and Romans butchered him. He's hanging on a cross, stark naked, bleeding all over the place. Some Roman sticks a spear in his gut. Now that's poor. Had no money. Well, Ken Copeland said he was a millionaire. I don't care what Ken Copeland said. Who cares what he said? He was broke. No money. No clothes. Okay, you know the Catholic picture where he's on the cross? That's a false picture. They crucified you nude. Now that's embarrassing. And your family and everybody walking around the cross, you're bleeding like a stuck hog, and plus you're naked in front of your parents. It's humiliating. It's degrading. He didn't even have a grave to be buried in. He had to be buried in a borrowed one. They took his robe off of him and sold it. He was a broke person. Why? So we could live in eternity in gasping wealth beyond human comprehension. <laughs> so you might be rich in this lifetime okay if you're Kenneth Copeland yeah you got a bowling alley in your bedroom you got an Olympic pool in your bathroom I get it you come in on a helicopter that stuff's all a bunch of crap okay you don't need a helicopter on your house sir you don't need an Olympic pool in your bedroom okay? no <laughs> stupid you don't need to steal money from people who don't have any money and pay a limousine payment. Idiots. Here it is. You're going to be filthy, gaspingly rich someday. 
All you got to do is stay faithful and overcome. You can win this thing. Yeah. He made himself of no reputation. Kanao means he made himself out to be nothing. Boy, was he a nothing. Hanging on the cross, nude, no money, no, broke, no land, no assets, no bank account, nothing. Everything gone. He took the form of a doulos, a slave. Can you imagine that? God becoming a slave? That's incredible. Died on the cross of Calvary. Jesus was rejected so you could be accepted by God. Did you know that? Jesus was shamed with sorrow and grief so you could be esteemed and find peace. It's right here. Looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, Hebrews 12, who endured the shame of the cross. You say, well, I got molested as a kid. My uncle forced me to perform oral sex on him. I never recovered. You're going to recover tonight. The shame of that night when you were four or five years old is going to the cross of Calvary tonight. Because he became the shame of your child molestation. He became the person that was rejected in your family like you are. He was despised and rejected. He was a man of sorrows and filled with grief. What does that mean? Your sorrows and your griefs are to be transferred to the cross of Calvary. You are to go free. Nobody likes me. That's self-pity. You can nail that to the cross too. Well, I was born in this family. My dad's an idiot. My mom's a moron. I understand that. I've met them, and I agree with you, but that's got nothing to do with who you are in Christ. Absolutely nothing. Your parents got nothing to do with it. You got a heavenly father now. You don't need a dad, sir. Jesus was despised and rejected and filled with sorrow and grief so you could go free and have peace. Jesus was rejected by his father like you were so you would be accepted by his father. Oh, wow. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried. Anaboa'o means to bellow. Almost like, I don't know, Aah! they heard it for a half a mile. He bellowed. What was he doing there? Father left him. Why? He had become your sin. Where sin abounds, grace now more abounds. Where sin abounds. Well, my dad, he didn't, uh, he was gone all the time, he worked all the time. No, he ran off with another woman. No, he wouldn't hug me or kiss me. He wasn't a fact. Look, I get all that and I agree with you. It's got nothing to do with you now. Jesus, his father, forsook him so he would accept you. You know what empathy is in the counseling business? It's different from sympathy. Empathy is your ability to kind of put yourself in somebody else's shoes. You know, like Grandpa used to say, don't criticize somebody until you walk a mile in their moccasins. Grandpa used to always wear moccasins, and he wasn't Native American. I couldn't understand it. But anyway, <laughs> I just played along with it. You see... Empathy is a, is, is, a, is a gift of the soul that you have to have to be in counseling or therapy, therapist. And if you don't have that, you're probably not a very good counselor or therapist. Hello? You got to have 
a little a pot and you got to mix in some things in that pot compassion some sympathy but empathy is the key it's the ability of a person to sense or feel what you just went through uh, kind of an ability to, to be in your shoes while you're going through a tough time to kind of sense or have a feel of it empathy divine empathy oh my god it is incredible you were rejected by your family he has empathy and knows exactly what rejection is you full of sorrow and grief empathy he knows exactly how you feel and more he was filled with sorrow and grief you don't understand this is the great divine swap of history Jesus swapped his life for yours he died so you could live he was filled with grief and rejection so you could be accepted and esteemed by God you don't understand you think because other people don't think much of you that means something it does not mean anything father is so happy you received his son he can't even believe it he's just stunned he's got all these benefits he wants to give you all you got to do is remove the blockers you're there you can't lose Jesus became a curse your curse so you could be a blessing to God <laughs> where'd you get that at Galatians 3 Christ has redeemed us exagorazo what does that mean to buy somebody you were bought with a price the precious blood of Christ Father couldn't leave you behind, but there wasn't any way to get rid of that sin problem until Jesus said, I submit my life of my own free will. And that's why Father gave me everything. You got the blood and holy perfection. Well, since I've been this high, everybody said I was a loser. If you accept that mindset, the devil will in fact make you a loser. That's a hundred percent guarantee that's gonna happen. Yeah, you know, the devil will make you a loser. He's good at it, very good at it. That's got nothing to do with the Lord. Well, when God looks at me, I don't know, I you know, I'm fat, stupid, and ugly. Okay, those are bad things, I agree. <laughs> but when he looks at you he also looks inside you and even though you're fat stupid and ugly if your spirit is born again you have the righteousness of God in Christ in you fatty dummy well I'm a dummy I'm an idiot okay if you're gonna keep saying that yeah the devil will turn you into a dummy and idiot I that's right if you knew your real identification, who you really were in Christ, you would not be living like you're living right now. You'd retire from living like this. You'd quit. He has made a curse for you. Why? When he hung on the cross, he became your curses. He became your sin. Ephesians 1. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. He was cursed so you could be blessed. Amen. Well, I'm not blessed. I don't feel blessed. Okay, well, there might be a block here or there. Let's repent of that tonight and get that thing removed. That's all there is to it. You repent of it and get it removed, the blessings flow. Why? Because Father wants to bless you. He's unhappy when he can't bless you. You don't understand his mindset. He doesn't think like we do. 
He wants to help you. He likes it. He's proud of you. See? It's very similar to uh, T ball. You know what T ball is? Well, it's a form of baseball. And uh, there's a baseball field here. There's some stands back there. And uh, they're for little kids. So they put the ball on the tee. The parents are in the stands yelling like crazy, acting a fool. They look like idiots, jumping around like apes. <laughs> hit it, Billy, hit it. And everybody knows T ball. That's not what. Boom, he hits it, dribbles off the thing. Oh, they think it's the greatest thing in the world. People are doing cartwheels. You don't understand. Father sees that in you. He sees you at a t-ball game. And when you get a hit, he's cartwheeling in the stands. <laughs> and when you strike out or you sin, sin abounds here, but... Grace, he doesn't see it like you see it. Man, darn it. When you strike out in T-ball, Father doesn't see it as a negative thing to you personally. He's thinking in his mind, here's how he thinks. Well, that's okay. That was a good swing. Now, that's a good experience. Get back up and swing again. That's how he thinks. I'm trying to get through to you. I want to get through to you tonight. I want you to see Father doesn't think like people think. People are genetically critical of other people. Wow, Brother Mike's got a divine revelation. He's a genius. People are by nature critical, particularly if you grow up in a household where your parents were critical. You absorb it naturally. Children are actually walking sponges, and they pick up everything that goes on in the house. <clears throat> if it's sexual perversion, they pick it up. If it's arguing and fighting, they pick it up. Kids are very absorbent they pick stuff up like that the horror hits the parents when they become junior high and early teenagers they start acting like their parent and the parent goes holy criminy what happened well what happened was you were acting like a complete jackass in front of your kids and kids are human sponges, and they just absorbed the jack. <laughs> and the last part of it, they developed later. <laughs> when happened, King Man King, well, they were born in your house. That's what happened to them, honey. Father doesn't look at it like that. He doesn't look at you critically. Brother Mike, God, I blew it again. I masturbated this week. Oh, I feel so sick. Father is not sick over that. You don't understand. His mindset's not like ours. He doesn't think like we do. Father thinks like a freak. He's a freak. He's always on your side, no matter what you do, even if it's wrong. Now, will you have to pay for something through sowing and reaping? Sure, you will. But he's not going to leave you while you're paying for it. He's going to rehabilitate you. His mindset is not like another person. Alright, let's get ready to close. Titus 2. 
all these benefits of Christ, oh my God, they're unbelievable. They're voluminous. They're staggering. <laughs> what have I been talking about for the last hour? Unbelievable. The greatest swap in history. God swapped his life for yours. Amen. Golly. Jesus was rejected and trashed by his family. They didn't believe him. Your family didn't believe you. Did they? A small percent of you had supporting parents, but the rest of you, they were jacked up. Let's be honest about it. They had issues. Yeah, that's a professional term. You just throw that out there and people think you're intelligent. Well, they've got issues. Your parents were all screwed up. Listen, turn your parents over to God. You have a heavenly father now. He's your new parent. And under no circumstances is he going to criticize you or run you down or betray you or reject you because he already did that to his son. He rejected his son. His son became your sin. He became your curse in life so you could be blessed and you could go free. Amen. All these benefits from God are to tell us what? Here it is. Are you ready? This is the scripture. It's shocking. The grace of God. Right? Where sin abounds, grace does more abound. Right? Grace of God. It's divine grace. It doesn't make any sense. It's crazy. Has appeared to all men. All men? Yeah. Sinners. Saints. Whosoever will may come and drink of the water of life freely. It's all up to you. You decide. Every person decides whether they go to heaven or whether they go to hell. God doesn't make that decision. He already chose. He chose you. Yeah. When I was in high school, in PE, I was one of the better athletes. And uh, in my uh, senior year, we had a lot of dummies in PE. So I was one of the more intelligent people in PE. So since I was a good athlete and I was more intelligent than the other dummies, I was usually captain when you paired off, right? And you played in seasons, right? Football season, basketball, and so on. So I'd be a captain, somebody else would be a captain. And uh, you'd flip forward or something, and somebody would choose first. Uh, that guy would choose. I'll take Bob. Oh, now I've got to choose second. I'll take Larry. I'll take, I'll take Dick. I'll take Brad. I'll ta when you got down to the bottom, <laughs> anybody here ever been at the bottom? Don't raise your hand, but... <laughs> At the, the last ones chosen, check it out, were the bad athletes. And they weren't the ones that were going to help you win whatever season it was. Football, basketball, whatever you're playing in. P.E. And so you get down to the last one or two or three guy, you go, man, it's... <clears throat> All right, I'll take Buford. <laughs> you kind of cringe and you're, oh, God, i got to keep the ball away from him. Because he was a certified goof, right? Father doesn't choose like that. Father don't choose like that. No, nope. I'll take all y'all. I'll take the good ones, the bad ones, and everything in between. Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. 
and learn from me for I am meek and lowly in heart you will find rest for your soul in fact according to 1st Corinthians chapter 1 father choosing that game the other guy would choose the best athlete father would choose the worst one first for God has chosen the base things of this world. What does that mean? The uncoordinated fat slob who can't shoot. He took that one first. And don't but don't yell out a name. <laughs> he took the bad one first. Don't you get it? Can't you understand what I'm saying to you? Father doesn't think like we think. He wanted you first. The bigger loser you are, the more he wants you. Why? You're more glory to him when you change. People that are at the total bottom, my God, they've got some testimonies to give. Hi, hello? Father chooses the bad athlete when he's playing basketball and PE. I didn't. I, I tried to get the best guy. Right? Because I wanted to win. Check this out. All this grace that we've been talking about tonight, let's close here. It is to do what to you? It is to teach you. In our churches in America, they preach greasy grace. See? They would preach what or teach what I taught tonight, and then it would stop before this verse. They'd quit there. See, and they would be afraid of hurting someone's feelings or sounding negative. I don't have that problem. <laughs> All these benefits of grace, where sin abounds, grace does more abound, isn't so you can go out and sin some more, it's so it will teach you to be appreciative. And grateful for what he has done for you so you do what so you live soberly and righteously and godly in this present age grace is designed by God to cause you to change and live a holy sanctified life not because you're going to get whipped if you sin but because you love and you're grateful to God for what he did for you on the cross of Calvary exchanging his life for yours so therefore since I'm so grateful what God has done for me I want to please him and make him happy I want to be allowed to receive all of his benefits without having them blocked by besetting sins secret sins sins nobody knows about stuff you do nobody knows that blocks your blessings that makes father Hurt here When you saw this mountain of grace it should have taught you to live a different kind of life Jesus said I always do those things that please him why because father would have been sad He couldn't give Jesus everything He doesn't think like we do differently his father sat over your life probably why if you're not receiving all these things he wants to give you yeah he's hurt oh is he mad at me because I did it no it's not the sin that hurts him it's the block that hurts him am, am I making this clear am I helping anybody have I screwed this up Father doesn't think like you. Oh, I did something wrong. I'm going to get hit in the head. No, that was your dad or your mom or your stepdad or the, your uncle or the idiot that raised you. No, I'm talking about your heavenly father. He don't think like that. He thinks, oh my God, this hurts because I can't get all the blessings to him because they're being blocked. He won't change. He won't repent. The demons are blocking it. They're stealing it. A thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy.
God's grace teaches you to live a different kind of life. Amen. Why do Christians sin all the time? You ever wonder that? They're too busy. Too busy with stuff they're not looking for. The coming. Yeah. Now, listen. Every great businessman, every great billionaire that built their own business, this Bezos guy, the richest man in the world now, Right? Amazon? Yeah. Is that his name? Boozos? Yeah, this Boozos guy. He's the richest guy in the world. Listen. 20-something years ago, I was watching Jay Leno one night, and Boozos was on there. And Leno was making fun of him. He said, this business you got going, what, how does this thing work? You just keep losing money every month? You just keep losing the money, and that's great. And the guy goes, yeah, things are going great for us. We're just growing and growing. Yeah, but you lost this much and that much. See, Bezos saw down there. Did you hear me? Bezos was laughing at Jay Leno making fun of him because he was losing his, in the business world, he was losing millions and millions of dollars on Amazon. But he saw there, 15, 20 years later, he saw himself as the richest man in the world when he was losing money. You don't understand. Father sees your failures as assets. Father sees your failure as an asset. Once you overcome the failure, you are now equipped by the Holy Ghost to help him overcome him. Amen. See, you're sinning, but grace is greater. Father likes your failures. Because once you learn to succeed, you can help him succeed later. Bezos was losing millions of investors' dollars. But those other millionaire investors, they kept pouring money into Amazon because they believed in him. They believed in him. The guy is a genius. They saw his vision. They saw he was a genius. So they kept pouring money down a rat hole, knowing that later they'd be rolling in dough. If you had Amazon stock back then and you still owned it, we'd be coming over to your house having a prayer meeting on your yacht. <laughs> Jay Leno was laughing at him on television and Bezos laughed right back. See, people are laughing at you and they think you're a loser and a failure. Listen, it's not who the person that laughs now, it's the person that laughs last. And when you got the Holy Ghost, you will be laughing last. You got greasy grace tonight? Let's pray. Lord, the incredible grace of God has now appeared unto all men, teaching us not to continue to live in sin and then ask for forgiveness and then get forgiven again. No, that's greasy grace, Lord. That blocks our blessing. That blocks our healing. That blocks our deliverance. That blocks the peace of God that passes understanding way down deep in our hearts. That, that ruins our life. Greasy grace ruins Christians' lives. No, no, no. That's not going to happen tonight. Some of my friends here tonight have greasy grace. They keep doing the same sinful thing over and over and over, over again. 
the devil keeps telling them the same thing God's mad at you. He's upset with you. He's tired with you. He doesn't that's a lie Father, I know that's a lie Lord. I Know you want to help them. I know you see their failures as a Holy Ghost asset down the road. I Know what you're doing Lord you're in the secular world in a way building a billion dollar company out of each person sitting in this room But tonight Lord there's some people here that have sinned in their life that's so easily besetting It's a temper issue. It's an anger issue. It's a cursing issue. It's a drug drinking issue. It's a frustration issue It's it's whatever it is and that's blocking their blessings and you're sad because you can't give them what you want to give them You can't bless them spiritually the way you want to bless them Because they have the setting little sins and Tonight they're going to remove them and repent of them. So the blessings will now flow Tonight they're going to do it I believe it I believe it. And once they let that thing go, healing is easy. Healing is easy. Deliverance is easy. The blessings of God are easy once you remove that blocker. What is it? What's blocking you spiritually? What is it? What? Is it something's blocking your destiny? What? And just raise your hand if you know what it is. Just asked what seven times. One, only one person. Okay. Two. If you know what it is, there's a three, four. If you know what it is. What is it? What's blocking? Your benefits from God. What's blocking? Is it sin? That's easy to fix. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. For the grace of God has appeared to all men. Teaching us to live godly. Will you repent tonight and let the Holy Ghost help you live godly? Will you do that? Will you change? Will you change? So you can be healed, so you can be delivered. What's blocking? What's blocking your blessing? Is it resentment? Is it frustration with a relative? Is it your parents? Is it someone that stole something from you? Somebody took your money? Somebody betrayed you? Brother or sister, somebody hurt you? What's blocking your blessings now? But just repent of it. Just repent of it. So you can be healed. Just repent of it. So you can be delivered. What is it? A spouse. What is it? Lord Jesus, forgive me for what I've done. Forgive me for hurting you, not by sinning, but by not allowing you to send me your blessings. That hurt you the most. God, please forgive me. You had all these things you wanted to give me And you can't because I got this besetting sin this negative attitude this unbelief this doubt I am so sorry Lord. I'm so sorry I'm so sorry Please forgive me Please forgive me right now. I Confess it right now in the name of Jesus. I just confess it 
Just whisper it out. You can do it right now. Nobody's watching you. The lights are down. Nobody can see you. Dear Jesus, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry for what I did that blocked my blessings. I'm sorry you were sad because you had all these things you wanted to give me. The devil blocked them. He stole them. He's a thief. He destroyed them. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me, dear Lord. Please forgive me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Now, if you know what that sin is or what that blocker is, just stand up real quick. When you stand in your chair right there, just stand up. One right there. Three. You know what it is. You know what's going on. And you want to remove it. You want to remove it. Okay? Come on down here. I want to talk to you. You want to remove it. Because you got all these blessings from God. And God sent them to you. But you haven't received them. You haven't received them. Something's blocking them. Something's blocking them. Is there something in your mind? Is this something in your emotions? Something's blocking your healing. What is it? What is it? Is it a ad negative attitude? Are you critical of yourself? Are you critical of someone else? What is it? What's causing it? What are you doing? What are you doing? Please bless the Lord tonight by repenting of that so he can send you his blessings. What is it? Loneliness? Fear of dying alone? Fear of not having any friends? What is it? It's usually a fear in the soul of some kind. It's usually a fear of something. What is it? Fear of dying broke? Fear of dying sick? Fear of having no friends? Fear of no, having no spouse? Fear of what? What's the fear? Just repent of it right now. If you have fear, that means you don't have faith. The two can't live together. You either have fear or you have faith. Okay? Just repent of it. Dear Jesus, I'm asking you right now to forgive me of my fears. I'm asking you to forgive me for my doubts and my unbelief. Right now, Lord, I'm asking you to help me. Here, stuff one up your heart. Raise your hands. Like that. Raise your hand. Pray harder. Ready? Go. Pray harder. Pray harder. I'm going to pray harder. Just pray harder. Dear Jesus, help me. I'm so sorry. Pray harder. Lord Jesus, help me. Help me, sweet Jesus. Help me, Lord. I'm so sorry. I squandered years. I've squandered decades. I've lost so much. It's all gone. Every relationship trashed. God, please forgive me, Lord. Please forgive me. Have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Pray harder. Pray harder. I beseech you, Lord, you help me. I beseech you, Lord, help me, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord. Help me. Help me, Lord. I love you. I love you, dear Lord. Help me. Help me. Help me, sweet Jesus. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. I hurt my family, Lord. I hurt them bad. My kids have got mental problems because of my behavior when they were young. I carried guilt and shame over it. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. God, forgive me of my guilt and shame. Help me, Lord. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. Come on. I'm so sorry, Lord. Get that thing out of there. Come on, let's go. Come on now. Just release it. Just release it. Lord Jesus, there's a spirit of infirmity in my body, Lord. He won't leave. Why won't he leave? Why won't he leave? What's the root of it? What's the root of it? What's the root of it? What is it? Abuse. Who abused you? My mother. Your mother did. What was her name? Kit. Kit? Yeah. Okay, raise your hand there. Father God, right now you see this beautiful gal standing here? She has wounds on her soul Whoa. because of Kit. She hated Kit when she was younger. She hated her. And that brought a curse on her. 
and then it brought a series of bad men and bad relationships and broken hearts. I'm asking you to forgive her, Lord. I'm asking you to forgive her for having bad feelings about Kit. I repent of it right now. Go ahead, sweetheart. Just repent of it. Okay? Repent of it. Go ahead. Hey, what's blocking your healing? Oh, I got that. I've got rejection, unforgiveness. Unforgiveness against who? Well, uh, I used to be bullied a lot, and then, then, and then my mother left, uh, left me at three months old. Your mother left you? Yeah, and then what I was What's her uh, name? And I was a warrant of the state. What's her name? Uh, so Socorro. Is she yeah. still alive? No, she passed on. Okay, close your eyes there. Close your eyes. Come on out, devil. Come out of there. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Come on. Father God, I ask you to forgive this man for the bad feelings he had about his mother. He had horrible feelings about her. She abandoned him when she when she, when he was young. He became a ward of the state because of his mother. She abandoned him and let him go. And he had resentment against his mother when he was young. He had resentment and unforgiveness in his soul. Jesus said, if you do not forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will not forgive you yours. He will not forgive you yours. Come on, Jesus was rejected. So you come out so you could be accepted. Jesus was rejected so you could be accepted. You are accepted tonight, but you must forgive the person that rejected you. Socorro, if you were here right now, I would pray my heart out for you, Mom. I would forgive you along with Brother Mike. We would both forgive you. We would forgive you. Yes. Socorro, come on out of there. Come out, mother, come out. Come on. Come out, Socorro. Rejection. Curse of mother, the curse of his mother. Come on out. Out you go. Out you go. Get out of there. Keep coughing. Come out right now. Come on. Get out of there right now. Get out. All the men rejected you. Boom. They don't like you. Yes. I know. All demons. Yeah. The devil's winning. Come on. Casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Turn that child into the Lord right now and repent of it. There it is. Come on. Repent of it. Yeah. Come on. Release it. Release it. All that negative emotion. Go on. Cut it out. Come on. Come on. Go. There it goes. Come on out. Come on out. There it goes. Come on out. Come out. Come on out. Release them now. Release them to the Lord. There they go. Let him go. There he goes. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Come out right now. Come out right there. It comes. There it comes. Keep going. Come on, just repent of it. Keep going. Come on out. Come out. Come out. Hating my mom. Hating my mom. Come on out. Hating my mother. Come out. Right now. Come on out. Come on out. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Hurry up and repent. Right here. It's his mother. His mother. Demons from his mother. Come on out. Get out of there right now. Worry and fear. Come on here right now. There it comes. Go. Come out. There it goes. Worry and fear. Come out. Come on out. Come out of there. I repent of living with fear and worry. Losing my sleep. Losing my health. Come out right now. Come on out. Come out right now. Go. Go now. Go now. Out. Out you go. There it comes. Come on out. Come on out. Go. Go. Come on out. Hold that. Hold that. Every ugly man. Get out of that body right now. All the bad men. Go. There it is. Come on out. Come out. Come out. All the oral sex. Go. Come on out. Come out of there right now. All the adultery. Go. All the anger. Hating men. Come on out. 
Come on, eighty men. There it goes. Come on. Come on out, every man, every bad man. Come out of her body right now. <laughs> there it goes. Thank you, Jesus. Come out. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Hey, if you hate your parents, come on. I haven't taken back any of those why are they still release that frustration right now. Go. Yeah, there it goes. Frustration. Come out. Frustration out of the soul. Out of there. There it goes. Come on now. Hey, if you hate your parents or you disrespected your parents, a curse fell on you. A curse fell on you. A curse fell on you. You got to repent of that. You got to repent of, of disrespecting your parents. You're going to have a miserable life, a failure, and loss and defeat. You're going to lose over and over again. Good to see you. If you had problems with your parents, you are in deep trouble. Come on, let's repent of it. Come out. Come out. Come on, Come on, Come on now. Come on. Keep coughing. Breathe. Breathe. Keep breathing. You gotta go. Breathe right now. Come on. Come on, devil. Come on. Come on. Keep breathing. Breathe. Breathe. Come on. Frustration. Get out of there right now. Frustrated. Exhausted. Go on. Come on. Come out of there right now. Exhausted. Go. There it comes. Keep coughing. Come on out. Go, Satan. Go, Satan. And hey, what's the story on this guy? You've repented and confessed. So now the bondages are broken. So then you need to command the spirits to go. Because just because the bondages are broken doesn't mean they're leaving. What spirits are in there? Well, right now, uh, the main problem I'm having is I, I took the Lord about eight months ago and it was an encounter with the Lord and it was awesome. But I still haven't quit smoke and I still have a partial, I'm on a, a med medication called Suboxone. Uh, for what? Uh, I, used to, I was a heroin addict for 10 years. Okay. And uh, I'm on like the smallest amount you can be on now to come off it. But I watched pornography uh, mm -hmm. once about 30 days ago. Yeah. And when I did it, something like, entered me. And yeah. I've been up tasting demons. like metal. And yeah. My body's been being like, like, like severely like, like tortured. Like, yeah. Like, Those are demons in there. Okay. okay, raise your hands there and close your eyes. Now tell the Lord you're sorry for what you've done. Lord Jesus, please forgive me. God have mercy. Lord, I need you to give this man of God godly sorrow so we can get these demons out. He's loaded with demons, drugs and porn and everything in there. Give him godly sorrow, Lord. Heal. Heal. Godly sorrow. I'm so sorry, Lord. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Come on. Come on. I know you're sick of it. Sick of it. Come out. Sick of it. Come out of there. There it goes. Sick of it. Come out. Come out of her spine. Come out of her spine. Come out of her spine. Go. Come out of her spine. Spirit, come out of her spine. There he comes. Next one, go. Next one, go. There they come. Next one. Next. Next one, come. Come on out. Frustration. Unbelief and doubt. Come on out of there. Come on. Tired of it all. Tired of it all. Tired of the fight. Come out. There it goes. Exhaustion. Come on. Exhaustion. Come out. Come on out. Exhaustion. Come out. Come out of there. Let's leave. I wonder if I still have something left. Uh, is there something left? I don't know. What is it? Well, I feel guilty about um, my daughter. She suffered from depression and anxiety. Oh, your daughter does? Yeah. Because of you? Yes. Okay. What's your daughter's name? Amanda. Amanda, raise your hands. Father God, this mother is carrying around burdens on her soul. She has burdens on her soul. 
Okay, she's not supposed to carry them for Amanda, her, her daughter. That's a sin. The Bible says we are to cast all our care upon him for he cares for us. And she's going to repent of carrying guilt and shame over her daughter right now. I repent of it, Lord. Go ahead. I'm so sorry, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. There it is. Let your tears go. Come on. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Jesus. Forgive me, Lord. God, forgive me. God, forgive me. Come on. I let my daughter go. Come out. I let my daughter go. Come out. I let my daughter go. Come out of there. Come on out. Come out. I repent of this sin. Come out. Come on. Come out of me. Come out. There it comes. Here he comes. There he comes. Come out, devils. Come on out. Get out of there. Come out. Come out. Come on out. Hold that. Come out. Come out. Jesus Christ. Out in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Out. In the name of the Lord. Now we got to find the next blocker. What's he angry about? Anger. He got bullied when he was a kid. Oh, okay. Now. You got bullied? Yes. All right. Now just flash those people through your mind okay. right now. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing that. I, I you got them in there? Yeah. Okay. Now ask God to go bless them right now, wherever they are. Go ahead. God bless them right now. Bless each one of them. Come out. No, you get out of there right now. Come out right now. Just get mad. Come on out. Go. There he goes. Keep coughing. Come out. Come out. Okay, just bless them like they were your best buddies. Even though they are both you, bless them like they were your best buddies. Come on. Come out. I release my daughter into your hands, Lord. I can't heal her. I can't fix her. I let her go now. Let your daughter go. Come on. Let her go. Let her go. Come on. Let her go. Come on. You must be patient and anger. Okay, now, now, is there any sin you haven't repented of that you think of? I'm not an addict. Come on. I don't need cigarettes. Yeah. I don't need anything of the Yeah. Well, on my wife, I did some adultery, too. You got what? I did some adultery on my wife. You know what I mean? Like, I would not turn on your wife? Yeah. What are you saying? I would not turn on his wife. I commit adultery on his wife. Oh, he did? Yeah. Did you ask God to forgive you already? Well, I asked him before, but I don't know if he did come out of me, though. What? I said, I asked him before, but I don't know. Oh, you did? Okay. He did come out of me. I don't know. Oh, did he forgive you? I, I, I can't tell. You can't tell? No. Okay, now, listen. Did you confess it verbally? Yes. Well, the Bible says if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive them. Now, did he forgive you? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he did. He had to. You guess he did? Now, wait a minute. Now, you're, you're doubting the word of God. Now, go ahead and repent. You're doubting what God said. Get out of that body right now. Come out of there. Come on out. There it comes. Get the rest out. Go. Come out. I shall condemn. Come out. Come on out. You're condemned at the foundation of the world. Come out. Come on out of there. Come out. Right now. Come on now. You are cursed to crawl in your bellies and eat dust. You got that? Get out. You got it? Okay, well, go ahead and get him out now. Put that there. You heard him. Close your eyes. Breathe out of your mouth. Breathe out of your mouth. Breathe out of your mouth. 
Now just use your mind and scream at him in there. Scream at him in your mind. Get out of my body in the name of Jesus right now. I command you. Let go in Jesus' name. I should do it. Now breathe. Come out of me. Just use your mind, not out loud. Breathe. Come on out. Spirit of smoking, I bind your power. Come out of him now. Go. Come on out. Porn, come out of me. Keep breathing. Pornography, come out of me right now. Breathe. Come out of my lungs. Come out, you pervert. Let my daughter go. Come on, you haven't let her go. Now release her. Release her. You have to. You got to release her. Come on now. Get out of my body. Use your mind. Get out of my body right now. Come out right now. Lift out right now. Come on out. Go. Get out of me right now. Fear and worry about her future. Fear of her future. Go. Fear of her future. What happened? I feel better. Uh, check your breath and see if it, that demon's still in your lungs. Can you tell? Come on. Yeah, there it is. Come on out. Next one. Come out. Come out of her feet. Come on out. Come out. Anything? I still feel like there's something. I don't. I can't tell. Like. Come out. Something what? It's like right here. It's right there. What is it? Come out of there. Come out. Unbelief and doubt. Get out of that body. Hey, uh, Robert. Hey, Robert. Robert. We pray for him. He wants to quit smoking. Come out of there. Go. Get out of that body. Come out. Come on out of there. Get out now. Come out quicker. Demons, come out quicker. Faster. Fast. Come out quick. Fast, dude. Come out fast. Come out fast. Come out fast. Go. Come out faster. Faster. Come out of my stomach right this second. Come out of my liver. Go. Fear and worry about my daughter. Come out of me right now. Go. I'm not going to die because of unbelief and doubt. Now come out. Come on out. Come out. Come on out. Come on out. Go. Go. Get out of my stomach. Come out now. Spirit, I hate you. I commit. There he comes. Here he comes. Go. Here he comes. Go. Here it comes. Go. Go. Come out of there. Come out of my body. Get out of my body. I said, go. Come on, honey. Don't stop. Get him out of there. Fight harder. Fight harder. Fight harder. Fight harder. Come on, fight harder. Fight harder. See how she's fighting? You fight like that. You fight like that. See how she's doing it? Uh, brain demons. Demons in your head. Come out, devil. Look what they've done to your life. Destroyed it. Go. Brain demons. Negative thoughts, stupid thoughts, chronic racing thoughts. They're causing them. Get out of my head. Get out of my head. Huh? Yeah. Call the brain demons out. Any demon. That. See? Come out right now. Go. Go. You got to fight to get them out. If you're casual, they won't come out. Go. Come out right now. Fight harder. Fight harder. Come on. Fight harder. Fight harder. Fight harder. Come out. Get out. Come out, you pervert. Come out. Homosexual spirit, I curse you. Come out. Spirit of perversion, come out. Come on out. Come on out. Get out of my body right now. Hurry up. Hurry up. Get out of there. Stop shaking me. Come out. Get out right now. Stop shaking me and come out. Satan, come out. Satan, come out. Satan, come out. Satan, come out. 
Uh, see that guy? Pray like him. Get on the floor and cry out to God, begging to help you. It's like I see how he's praying. The demons are coming out. When you just stand around, and look around, and think. They never come out. Get him like that. See what he's doing? See what she's doing? They're modeling for you. They're showing you what to do. That's why you can't get the river. Huh? I, I like to try to do self deliverance. No, self deliverance isn't going to work. That is works. Pray like that. You don't see that? See, those are brain demons. They're keeping you from seeing how to get delivered. Come out. Notice that? The brain demons are stealing. You're seeing that guy and you're not saying, wait a minute, that's how you do it. Come out, devil. Come out, devil. Okay. You're gone. You got to fight for your life. You're failing all the time because fight harder. See what they're doing? Can't you see them fight? She's fighting to get them out of there. You don't fight. You just think about it. That won't do it. Okay, go ahead. See what he's doing? Do what he's doing. Do what they're doing. Go, devil. Come on out of there, you pervert. Come out, you pervert. You stinking pervert. Come out. Come out, you pervert. Masturbator. Homosexual. Pedophile. Come out, you pedophile. Come out, you pedophile. Come out. Fight. Fight. Did you let her go? Did you let her go? Okay. Come on. Did you let her go? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Tell it. Say it. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come out. Come out of that body. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Come on. Get out of me. Go. Get out of my liver and come out of my stomach right now. Go. Go. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. All right, speak in tongues. Go. Did you get your speak gift of tongues going? Get out of my son now. Go la va va. Get out. Go la va sata. Say it. Manda ma shande. Go la va va. Manda ra va shanda. Manda ma shanda ra va sida. Go la ma shanda ra va. Go la ma shanda ra va va. Come on. Come on. Get out of that body right this second. Get out of there. Get out. 20 wasted years. Come out of my body. 20 wasted years. You gotta be kidding me. Go. Go. You get out of my mind. You get out of my brain. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Go. Get out of that body right now. Go. Come on out. Get out of there. Come on out. Right now. Go. Go. Come out. Come out. The brain demons. YouTubers. YouTubers, go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com. And hit the teaching button tonight. The teaching button. Okay? You need to read that article, How Satan Controls the Mind. The other article, Satan's Counterattack. You're going to get attacked within 48 hours of this prayer meeting. 48 hours, they're going to hit you. You got to be able to take it and fight back. You do not pray about demons. Okay? You do not pray over demons. You don't do that. You fight back, okay? You fight. You use your authority. You command the spirits. Out they go. Out they go. Tomorrow, 
Oasis of Hope. I'll see you in Flagstaff tomorrow at 1 o'clock for a healing and deliverance seminar. I'll see you in Los Angeles, California on Skid Row, December 22nd. December 22nd. I'll see you back here next Sunday. God bless you. See you next time.